Okay, welcome. Here we are uh, to hear the research that these uh, high school students at Dover Sherburn High School, Tachani Galaf Rahmer, and Victoria Friesen have done on smart programs in Massachusetts. Uh, here's just another way to quantify uh, 
how effective SMART can be with percentage of recycling. So towns that use SMART, or here it's indicated as pay as you throw, um, have higher recycling percentages than towns without SMART. And then again, you can see Dover's on the lower end. It's uh, more than 6% below the Massachusetts average, and the recycling is more than 10% below the average for SMART towns. So for this graph, we found towns with SMART that have similar populations. The number of households is Dover. And as you can see, all, all of the towns have significantly lower um, solid waste pounds per, pounds per household and higher recycling percentages that Dover has. And most of this data is from 2014, but two of the towns, Bear and Berkeley, are from 2013. And we predicted the number of households that would probably be smart and over um, 86.3% based on the number of households that already use the transfer station today. So the last two columns are really the measures. It's the solid waste per household. So those are towns with smart. So several of those are even above the average. If you remember on the couple slides ago, it was 1,100 pounds per household is the average for smart towns. And then you can see the recycling is much higher as well for all these, all these towns. All roughly the same population, same number of households. Do we have any information on median income of these towns? Uh, some of the case studies have, have median income, and two or three of these towns are in the case studies, so you'll see. I, I suspect income, median income, is an influencer on the waste. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I asked. It might, it might be yeah. nice to have another column that shows median income that yeah. you probably get from the census mm -hmm. data. Yeah. How did you come up with the 86.3 as household participation rate? Um, that's the percentage of households that use the transfer station now. Current. Okay. Or smart. And, and I got that from Dover Trucking. Dover, I, so that's the oh. Dover Trucking gave me the number of households that they oh. so subscribe. They, so they have about 14% of the town. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the case studies that we did and we looked a little more in depth into these towns. So just to point out, Dover is on the lower end of the recycling and the higher end of the waste reduced. And this is just kind of a summary of the stats from, from all the towns that we did case studies of. So I'll just say these were selected because they had case studies done <laughs> already. So uh, Mass Department of uh, Environmental Protection. So in the, pack, in the back of your package actually is the case study for three of the towns. And then I guess it was North Brookfield and Littleton. Littleton, uh, They had their own case studies. So we could make these all available, but that's, that's why it was these five. study we looked at was North Brookfield. And North Brookfield has a similar population as Dover, a little bit smaller, and the median household income is $42,000. So the program started in 1997, so it's a very old program, and it uses the bag system. It has two size bags, a small one and a large one, and it also has an annual fee. And they, at the transfer station, they accept yard waste composting to help produce solid waste and 62.7 percent of households use the transfer station. So the North Brookfield has 1,033 pounds per household of trash which is a lot lower than Dover and 26 percent recycling rate and since the beginning, since the implementation of the ASU Pro, waste has decreased 20 percent and recycling has increased 14 percent. We also conducted an interview with someone from North Brookfield on what they thought of their SMART program. So we interviewed John Alpin, who's the Board of Health Director. We asked, after several years, what would have been the impacts on your town due to SMART? So SMART keeps the recycling rate at, keeps the recycling high at 40% rate and trash in Costco is still pretty low. And um, John Alvin also said that 
town people were very satisfied on a scale of 1 to 10, which is 10, their SMART program. And the key success factor was that the bag fee was set at the cost of disposal, so it was very easy to um, cover all the disposal expenses at the transfer station. And if they were to change anything, change anything in the implementation of SMART, they would have given 50 free bags at the beginning of the program to help phase in the program. And we also asked them if the town has any regulations for private haulers to make sure that private haulers um, or residents who use private haulers also have to recycle. And they do have a lot of private haulers that stop from recycling to all residents. And we asked them if they have an enterprise fund, which we will explain more about later. And they said no. But all of the their fees for all of the expenses. I just have one question. Um, this gentleman here said that recycling rate was at 40%, yeah. but your previous slide, you said yeah, the town was at 26%? Yeah. So the, um, the, the case study slide was done like a year after the case. I don't want to go back. It's not, it's not taking me back. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> well, my friend. Yeah. Okay, okay, Kathy. Okay, here we go. Yeah. than Dover, uh, and it has a median household income of about $100,000. Um, so this program started about five years ago, and like North Brookfield, it uses bags. Um, it has three bag sizes, ranging, you know, you see from $0.75 cents to $2 in price. Um, it also charges a fixed fee of $100 per year. Uh, it actually has a pretty low percentage of household participating, which is 49.5%. So again, the households that aren't participating would be using private haulers, which um, the equivalent in Dover would be Dover trucking. Uh, just to look at some of the impacts that Paisley Road has had in Littleton. Um, so they passed five years later in 2015, were over $100,000 less than they were in 2010. And there was a decrease in waste of 42% in the first year, and an increase in recycling in the first three years um, by about 9%. So we were also able to conduct an interview with uh, Jim Kwai, the Highways Operations Manager in, um, in Littleton, who is familiar with the SMART program there. So just to see, uh, look at some key parts of this interview. So first of all, uh, he pointed out that there was no additional personnel required when they implemented the program. So the good thing about using the bag system that they use is the bags are generally brightly colored and very easy to monitor. So they didn't need to hire anyone extra to kind of be checking people. He also mentioned that there's kind of a self-enforcing policy where because it's so easy to see if the bags they're using are the, the correct bags, um, people feel a social pressure to use the correct bags and therefore uh, there's less of a need to hire extra personnel to monitor people. Uh, he also noted a very high rate of satisfaction. Um, this is due to, he said it was very important that they, they listen to complaints and take the complaints into account and kind of address everyone's complaints while they were designing the program. Um, and that resulted in a very high level of satisfaction from the public. Uh, 
also shows here that they were they required a private hauler to offer a package deal including both waste and recycling pickup just so that uh, people who try to you know kind of avoid the smart program a little bit by using private haulers are still kind of held accountable for uh, trying to recycle more. The next case study is Duxbury. Duxbury is about two to three times as big as Dover and has a median household income of 115,000. The Duxbury Smart Program started in 2008. It also uses bags with two sizes and it has a small annual fee that was actually, but that before Smart was about, was a lot bigger than $25. And the annual fee is supplemented by taxes. Um, Duxbury also accepts yard waste and they also sell um, reduced price compost bins for residents to use at home. And has a very high participation rate, 93.4%. The impacts in Duxbury is that the fixed uh, cost of operating the transfer station decreased by $190,000 in the first year. That's a lot of money. And that, yeah. that includes the tipping fees? Uh, Your fixed cost includes tipping fees? Yes, I think so. <coughs> No, the, the tipping fee would be considered a variable cost. So, what were the what are the fixed, fixed costs? Cost Just would personnel. Be the personnel, trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, where you know the, the, the transport. So, I guess the fuel and the tipping fees are typically the variable costs that they that they used to cover with the uh, bag costs, the variable cost. You, you'll see that's. We've gone, gone into more detail later on. And so so Duffer is the only town that we didn't get the interview data back in time. So I chased them the last three days and they kept promising time and never came through. So we don't have the interview data for Duffer yet, but we'll have it for another round later on. So uh, another case study town was Sandwich. And as you can see, it's significantly larger than Dover, about three or four times larger. Um, with a median household income of about 64000 So this program started fairly recently, four years ago, and again, they use bags, and like Littleton, they have three bag sizes, ranging from $0.25 cents to $1.20 per bag. And then they also have an annual fee paired with that, which is actually lower than the pre-smart fee, which uh, would be because they've kind of, um, rather than having everything paid via a fixed fee, they also have certain things paid via the variable fees. Um, so you can see they have 56.5% of their households participating in this. And just some of the impacts, we can only get data from the first six months, but it's, it's still pretty um, clear that Smart has had good impacts. They've had disposal savings of over $25,000, and they had a decrease in waste by 46%, and an according increase in recycling by 46%. This is just uh, something that I observed, Carol, on the point you made earlier. The uh, median income here is half of Duxbury's, yet Dux Duxbury's trash per household was a thousand and something pounds per household. So this is half the median income and it's more pounds per household. So I don't know how strong the correlation is, but I suspect that it, it, there is a correlation. So we were able to get an interview with Sandwich. Um, the key things to point out here are that the solid waste tipping fees actually decreased by around 55% since the waste itself decreased by 55% overall. And as in other towns, there was no additional personnel that needed to be hired. Needed to be hired. Um, they also had some complaints in the first few months about um, the, the quality of bags, but they, they collect the complaints and they address them. And now the residents are satisfied. So kind of along that same vein, they found that in implementing the program, public education was crucial and they had to hold multiple town meetings to kind of inform the residents of what kind of program this was going to be. And then, as Iggy said, we'll get to this more later, but uh, Sandwich uses an enterprise fund and the transfer station is completely self-funding through use fees. And our last interview and case study conducted was in Needham. The median has a population of about five times the size of Dover, and the median household income is around 130,000. The program started in 1998, 
and it has two bag sizes, and they do not have an annual fee, and they accept yard waste composting, and they also sell um, uh, household use compost bins, and they also have a higher participating rate, by to twenty percent. So the impacts on, of SMART on the first year is that the waste decreased by 41% and recycling increased by 13%. So in Needham there were also no changes to the number of personnel uh, hired and well they do have some small problems with illegal dumping which is sometimes can be like a negative side effect of SMART. It's really very small, like small cases, not a huge problem. And the SMART program was very successful in increasing recycling. A key success factor is that the town manager was very um, pro-SMART, so um, they pushed that through the town. And the Newton does Newton charges private haulers a fee to dispose of trash in their transfer station, but no fee for recyclables, so that encourages private haulers to collect more recyclables. And the town does have an enterprise fund, but they also get money from taxes. So just to kind of summarize uh, general trends and how SMART is used throughout Massachusetts, um, uh, in case studies, um, the majority of towns that use that use bags for unit costs and easy visual compliance. So as I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to see uh, to see that bags are, are being used correctly because they can be brightly colored and then obviously it's easy to monitor the volume. Uh, so bag costs are generally between 25 cents and two dollars and as you've seen in the case studies, it's generally two or three bag sizes that are offered. So in general, there's also a system of pricing where bag fees and bulky item fees cover variable costs, such as tipping fees, and then there's also a flat rate fee to cover uh, fixed costs, and this flat rate fee usually ranges between $25 and $100 per year. Um, that you've also seen that in certain communities there's, there's a rather low participation rate, um, but in general the, the average is 66.2% participation rate. And as we mentioned, the non-participating households are households that use private haulers rather than taking their their own waste to the transfer station. Um, so now we're just going to go over specific program design and implementation considerations, so different options that the town has for what they're going to implement. Um, so this is going to include unit-based systems, uh, both the, um, how to handle both the items and household refuse within a SMART program, uh, different pricing models that can be used in the program, a uh, source reduction program that can be implemented concurrently with a SMART program, how to regulate private haulers, and what an enterprise fund is and uh, how it can be useful. So the first interface system that we're going to talk about is bags, which um, all of the case studies use. So in the bag system, all trash must be disposed of special bags um, that sold by the town are usually colorful, so they're easy to spot. And bags can come in different sizes for different sizes of households. Bags are typically sold at local stores or town offices. And 72% of Massachusetts smart communities use bags. So the advantages of bags are that they're easy to spot, as we've said. As you can see in that picture, the bag is very brightly colored. So you can see uh, if a black bag is a bunch of purple bags. And it's easy to control the bottom of waste disposed because it's just one side of the bag. And for the disadvantages of bags are that they're more expensive to produce than stickers or punch cards, and they may be inconvenient to purchase. The second system is stickers. So in this sticker system, all trash must be disposed of in a bag that has a town sticker on it. The stickers can also come in different colors to be fixed to different size bags. And they're also sold at local stores, municipal offices, and 20% of Massachusetts towns use stickers. So the advantage of stickers is that they're less expensive than bags, but they have a lot of disadvantages, like 
it's difficult to spot trash bags that have stickers on it because the stickers are pretty small, and it's difficult to, to control the bottom of trash disposed. Someone can place the sticker on any size bag, and they also could be inconvenient to purchase. So the last unit-based system that we'll mention is the punch card system, which is really less common now. Uh, but the idea is that residents will purchase a card that can be used a certain number of times, and every time they drop off a certain amount of waste um, in attendance at the station, will punch the card. So again, such a punch card can be sold in local stores, in municipal offices, and like I said, it's less common, so only 8% of Massachusetts drop-off towns of smart use punch cards. So the advantages to punch cards are that residents can use containers that they already own. They don't need to buy specific bags. Um, they're also less expensive to produce than other options like stickers or bags. Uh, some disadvantages, though, are that extra tenants must be hired to punch the cards. It's a little higher maintenance, I guess, than bags or stickers would be. Um, it may be inconvenient for residents to purchase. Uh, and attendants have discretion regarding how many punches per visit. So as I said, the number of punches correspond to the volume of waste disposed. So uh, it's kind of a little difficult for the attendants to see the volume of waste that's disposed and then decide how many punches to make accordingly. So that's a little less efficient than the other, the other two options. Um, so moving on from the unit-based pricing, we're not going to discuss enterprise funds. So the idea of enterprise funds is to make the program easy, easier to manage. So essentially what happens is an enterprise, in an enterprise fund is that uh, all the money that is collected for the program is used for the program. Um, and this is used in place of having to uh, put the money into a general fund and then reallocate the money for the program. So. Uh, this makes it easier to track the costs and to uh, make sure that all the costs are being covered. Um, in an ideal enterprise fund, uh, the enterprise fund would be self-funding, so the, the, uh, the fees paid would cover all the costs of the transfer station, but in some situations, as we've seen in certain case study towns, um, uh, uh, funds from the, the general fund need to be reallocated to the, to the enterprise fund in order to help cover the costs. So in uh, the Mass Environmental Protection Agency uh, <clears throat> data, they do have a field indicating whether they have the town uses an enterprise fund or not. And I, as I'm seeing the slide, I'm thinking we probably should have done a, uh, a calculation on what percentage of towns <clears throat> have enterprise funds. We have the no cap. We don't actually have <coughs> that data. So we that's not, that's not, <laughs> try to acquire if they put it in a query out to the Daisy Trails Park communities mm -hmm. across the state. Yeah. <coughs> so could I ask real quickly, so the enterprise fund would, would pay salaries of the employees that are at the transfer station as well, or is that a separate? You could s uh, define it to be whatever, uh, whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so. I think that would go under fixed costs, so when you're charging people flat mm -hmm. rates to use the transportation every year, I think those would cover that cost, so that could go to the enterprise fund. So another consideration of towns that fund smart programs is what to do with bulky items that probably won't fit in containers such as bags. Um, so it's important to consider this because communities without a, a specific program for bulky items tend to have problems with illegal dumping for people that really don't know what to do with their items. Um, so some options for it to do is that townspeople might affix stickers that can be bought through the town to bulky items that might not fit, might not fit in a bag or container. Um, the cost of the sticker could correspond to the weight of the quantity of the bulky item. Uh, certain towns decide to provide a free bulky waste collection uh, in order to mitigate illegal dumping. So this would be more of an option in towns that might have problems with illegal dumping, which I'm not sure, not sure would really be an issue in Dover. But just to give an example of the sticker option, um, uh, we could charge $5 for a car load or something less than 100 pounds, $10 for uh, pickup load or $20 for a trailer or something that's uh, over 300 pounds. And then obviously things that can be recycled would be free as the idea of SMART is to encourage recycling in general. So there are three pricing models that SMART towns use. The first one is a proportional rate model and in that towns can only sell one container. Like they would only sell one size like bag, like a 30 gallon bag. 
and that does not include an annual fee. In a variable rate system, towns can, or residents can purchase different size containers, like a 15 gallon bag and a 30 gallon bag, and there's also no annual fee on that one. And a hybrid system combines those first two rate systems with an annual fee, and the DEP recognizes this system as the best way to, um, to um, you is the best one to use because it the annual fee covers um, fixed costs and provides revenue stability while variable costs are covered by the unit based fee. So some source reduction programs that can be implemented concurrently with pay as you grow to help reduce the amount of solid waste are compost. Residents can compost nearly 50% of their waste. So it's very important to have a composting um, system to help residents reduce their solid waste. Mass DEP makes brochures on composting available online. It also can also be mailed out or handed out to residents. And certain towns, like a few of the towns you mentioned in the case studies, sell home composting bins for residents at a reduced price, which is made possible by a DEP grant. And then residents can also reduce their solid waste by donating old textiles to textile donation bins and donating old like, toys and books to the swap shop. Mm -hmm. um, so another consideration in our private haulers is we've continued to mention a lot of people elect to switch to private haulers when SMART is implemented because they feel that it's better suited to their needs. So obviously the problem here is that this might reduce the impact of SMART uh, because uh, private haulers don't necessarily encourage recycling as much as a SMART program would. Uh, so many towns and choose to, and the Mass DEP recommends that a regulation be put in place uh, so that the private haulers are also doing some encouraging uh, to increase recycling. Uh, so, so these regulations might include uh, making the private hauler provide recycling services for all their clients and uh, most effectively to uh, sort of bundle the fees of recycling and waste rather than charging for waste and then for recycling separately so that people get the package deal of waste and recycling processing. Uh, so these regulations aren't only recommended, they're also a requirement for receiving a SMART program grant from the Mass DEP. Uh, so if that's something that uh, we want to do going forward, the, the regulations are something that we must consider and implement. So I'm not 100% sure how to go with trucking charges. Mike, you use them, haven't you? Yeah, they, they charge two fees. They have a different rate for recycling? Yeah, you pay, you pay additional, I believe. Come again? You pay additional, I believe, for that. Yeah, but is it uh, less per container, or is it the same rate? You know? uh, I have to double check, but it's, you know, if you want them to just take your trash, pay for that, and then if you want recycling, you pay additional. Yeah, That's so all this is saying is that you, you this is uh, recommending they charge the same rate. So let's just say it's $5 for a bin of trash, they charge $5 for a bin of recycling. Basically, it's $5 for a bin. Is what, uh, what would be about there? What's that? So they basically take the whole thing away from the price. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, a lot of residents in Dover who um, will use private haulers for their trash but take their recycling to the transfer station yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I really like so much. Yeah. So that becomes an issue if you have a combined cost. So like I said, I don't know how, I mean, they, and they can still do that though. They, the, the recycling would still be free and go. It, is the recommendation that they charge the same, that, that the private hauler charge the same, whatever fee they charge, they charge the same fee for trash and for recycling, or that they charge one fee that covers trash and recycling? One bundle of price for both the services. So if someone yeah. wants to separate it out into their own recycling, they, they have to they pay, they pay no, for a service that they're not using. No, no, they pay for like $5 a bin like a 50-gallon bin or whatever the other bins that, that he picks up. Well, he charges by the pickup. Yeah. But, so that it's not cost prohibitive. So residents don't choose to just pay for trash and not pay for recycling, which could be part of the reason why you have such high trash volume and lower recycling numbers with 
transfer stations. So while some residents might be bringing their recyclables down there and have their trash picked up privately, okay. some certainly may not be bringing their oh, recyclables sure. down there. The other piece of it is that haulers really should understand the laws of the state perhaps better than many residents do, which is they shouldn't be picking up trash that includes a lot of recyclables in it. They're prohibited from doing that. And so this really levels the playing field so that what the haulers provide to a homeowner is similar to what you would provide at the transfer station. So it really is in sync one with the other. OK, on to implementation considerations. In this section, we will discuss program management, public outreach, and gaining public support, and phasing out a SMART program. So a SMART advisory committee are usually established in towns that adopt smart phase and grow. The committee can be comprised of members from the Budget Committee, the Highway Department, the Recycling Committee, the Board of Health, and any other relevant committee, selectmen and influential townspeople, so everyone's voices, everyone's complaints are heard. And the committee should design a program, develop the economics and fee structure, draft an implementation schedule, which should outline steps to sell uh, the SMART program to key decision makers, gather public input, educate the public, and draft enforcement procedures. In most towns, get this done in around nine months. So the public outreach and support. So I think it's very important to not only inform the public of what the program is going to be like, but to also allow the public to give back feedback. Um, so uh, gaining public support. Um, so obviously it's critical to the success and the ease of implementation of the program. Uh, so one misconception that the town should try to avoid is the idea that the people are just paying more to throw out their trash. It's important to emphasize that you're just paying in a different way and in a more equitable way uh, in order to uh, get rid of your trash. So uh, the program can be introduced via newsletters or stuffers that come with utility bills. As I mentioned, it's also important to solicit feedback, as we saw in some of our case studies, uh, such as Littleton, where they found that uh, essential to the success of the program. So the Mass DP suggests that while the town is assigning a SMART program, comments should be solicited from the public through public hearings or direct contact with community groups at community events. And then in order to further educate the public of the new program, uh, the town might use you know, a telephone or email, hot email hotline that can answer questions about the program posters, flyers, banners uh, to put up around the town, a brochure that can be sent through mail or email, uh, gain media coverage, uh, uh, advertise through social media, or create a website or web page on the town website. To phase in the program, a town might provide a certain number of bags free to all residents, like 52 bags free per year and then charge for each additional bag used so that residents can get used to paying for bags. Um, and this can be done through a mass GDP grant. And also, for the first three years or so of the program, the town can reduce taxes um, in proportion to the fees raised by, by the transportation through bag fees and annual fees so that the town can establish an enterprise fund and um, phase out the taxes to the transfer station. And then towns that include waste disposal costs as part of property taxes, like Dover, may want to introduce an annual fee so that residents know that they are actually paying for their waste disposal and paying to use the transfer station. And this next section is a straw man proposal for Joker based on the best practices that we've observed from the following sections. From the previous sections. So uh, these are the design considerations that we believe best apply to Joker. So for the unit based pricing system, we recommend the use of bags, uh, which are very easy to promote compliance with and very easy to uh, monitor the volume of waste that is disposed with. Uh, other advantages you mentioned are there no additional staff necessary. Uh, we recommend maybe installing a camera to survey the transfer station. Um, just the presence of a camera uh, often encourages people to comply with the regulations. 
Uh, we recommend two bag sizes. We believe that one bag size is too inflexible, but allowing a smaller bag size to be purchased allows residents to be further rewarded because if they produce uh, you know, just 15 gallons of trash per week and they want to just dump that 15 gallon trash bag, uh, then they can do so and not have to pay for the, the more expensive 30 gallon trash bag. Uh, we recommend the bags be sold at grocery stores in towns like obviously Dover, but also in Wellesley, Medfield, and Needham. Um, and also that they can be sold at the town garage. Uh, so for pricing models, uh, we believe that a hybrid pricing model is best. As you saw, most of the case studies we looked at had hybrid pricing models with a fixed fee to cover transportation costs and variable fees to cover tipping costs. So some estimates of possible costs um, that we might that might be implemented are twenty dollars per vehicle per year as a fixed fee, and then a two dollar thirty three gallon bag and a one dollar fifty gallon bag. We also recommend uh, using the sticker system for all the items uh, with stickers of five dollar per car load, uh, ten dollar per pickup, and twenty dollar per trailer. Obviously, these numbers are just estimates, and uh, further calculations would have to be made in order to get more precise numbers for what would be appropriate for Dover. Quite when you were when you were looking at the, uh, the uh, best practices of other communities, were there communities that did it, uh, a fixed fee per household versus per car? Um. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I thought about that too when we were, when we were doing this, and I, I can't, Kathy, maybe you know what the fixed fees are. Well, what's most common is you'll see a, you know a sticker cost, annual sticker for the first car coming in. And then maybe a, a substantially reduced cost if it's a second car coming in. Mm -hmm. um, that's most common in transfer station communities rather than the household, because the household will cover multiple cars potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so it's most common. So it's a sliding scale for. First sticker is usually the primary, you know, so most households will probably have just one sticker, and there may be an occasion where they would want a second sticker and it would be a nominal cost just to provide access to sure. that vehicle. So to even the playing field between private haulers and the transfer station, we believe that the town should pass regulations to make private haulers um, offer recycling to all customers and to require private haulers to provide recycling as well as trash pickup in one bundle B. And as Tatiana said before, this is a requirement to um, apply for a max DUP grant. For funding, we believe that the town should implement an enterprise fund to increase control of the funds going in and out of the transfer station and by making um, the finance of, like, making um, them more transparent. And we also believe that the town should reduce um, taxes based on how much money the transfer station is putting into their enterprise fund so that the program is 100% tax neutral. And just to cl clarify on the uh, requirement to get the, the grants, um, the township pass regulation required recycling mandatory and private haulers and to require private haulers, or is it or? It's and, it has to be both. Top line, even the plan field, the good sign of the game. Private haulers. That, that is what it is suggesting and the tax. It, it's, in other words, both, both have to be requirements on the haulers, not on mandatory recycling for residents. Yeah, so the point. requirement would say that private haulers that are picking up from households in Dover mm -hmm. must pick up um, recycling as well as trash for all the customers yeah, at so one bundle of the price. So, so it's and mandatory, what the mandatory recycling for residents is a recommendation, right. not I'm a trying to get the but not a requirement. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's on the haulers. We, we should fix the, the terminology there. It's just, you know. No, I understand it's yeah. the hauler. But for yeah. those folks who like to go to the transfer station every so often and don't want to pay for something they're not using, when you have one fee that covers trash and recycling, but you do your own recycling, you're paying your hauler for a service that you're not getting. Well, it depends on so the So I just wanted to charges. clarify that it's a requirement of the state. Yeah. To, to provide recycling collection to all households that get trash collection from a private hauler. And at one fee. At yeah. one bundle of price. Now the right. hauler will set that price. Yes. Yeah. Whatever covers their cost. But at one bundle of price. That really comes from, you know, 
years and years of experience and data from communities that in the past started with just a trash program um, at the curb. So they might have curbside trash pickup, but then a drop off for recycling. And the disparity in terms of participation, it was just so clear. And the amount of recyclables captured when the systems are different um, is just not nearly, not in the same ballpark as effectiveness as if you're picking up recyclables the same way as the trash is picked up. So while some, I can imagine some residents probably, you know, prefer and enjoy using the transfer station. It's a very nice transfer station. But to just make it level so that everyone who gets trash picked up also has as easy access to recycling as their trash, that's what it's about. And he's bringing that to the transfer station, still the trash. The hall. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who's going to monitor him on the days that he's there, other than when we're not open? For the trash? Yeah. I mean, that's something I think the group will have to yeah. discuss for sure, but I think one option may be to discuss the idea of whether, if you if you were to move forward with a bag program, would Dover Trucking pick up pays you throw bags from the households that he serves? So well, somebody still, everything should, would come in in that same color bag potentially. Correct. Well, it's, he comes in on off days. Oh, that's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Oh, days when the transfer station is not open. Right. So and that's a big pot. That's a consideration. If, yeah. you, if that's you require him only to come when we're open. That's a whole different Yeah, and no, so Needham charges, it, it, it's noted in the, in, the, in the notes that they actually charge their private hours a fee. Oh, no, I'm not talking the fees. I'm just talking operational-wise. Who's, who's going to monitor him? You know what I'm saying? He comes in on off days. Yeah, I'm not sure. So we have to, we have to go through it. I'm not, but that's I'm a sure big thing. You know, but... What, uh, Craig, I'm just thinking out loud, but what if that um, box that he currently uses was reserved exclusively for um, his, his trash and therefore... Well, it kind of is now, man. Yeah, yeah. But you're gonna, you'll have a traffic issue, number one. Uh, you'll have them back to Walpole Street, believe me. Those are the things we've got to talk yeah. about. Yeah. And I'm not sure what that has to change for him. I mean, you know, we have to talk through it. I mean, I'm, I'm well, if we're watching everybody else, they'll dump colored bags. Yeah. Somebody's got to watch him. But he's only able to go in. He's only able to go in on the off days, right? He has special permission. And one day during the week. Yeah. Not doing one day Yeah. So, I mean, there could be a, an arrangement for him by the truckload or as Needham does it. They have a scale, so they, they charge it by the weight. But Needham, you know, Needham also has somebody, that, I mean, there's a booth right there, you can't yeah. just drive in, I mean, there's a whole yeah. different type of operation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the town should establish a Dover Smart Planning Committee. The committee should include members from all relevant committees and should take charge of completing a design, approvals, and implementation plan. And they can also consider things like what you just brought up and answer questions like that. So for public outreach, obviously it's important to inform the public by publicizing the program via newsletters, publications in the newspapers, flyers, and other things like that, starting at least six months prior to the program implementation. And the public response is also very important to consider. So the town should invite comments and criticisms via public hearings, online comments page, other things like that, and address some of the most common concerns to the public on a web page or even a hotline. Um, so for the implementation itself, again, so we're facing the program. Uh, we recommend that complimentary bags uh, be provided. Uh, so for for the first year, just a small bag uh, per household per week, so that. Uh, the, the residents don't feel the cost as much and can be eased into it. Uh, for bag availability too, we foresee that there might be some people you know, forget to buy the appropriate bags and bring regular bags to the transfer station instead. So we recommend that uh, maybe for the first uh, first month or first couple of weeks, uh, the, the bags that the town requires be sold at the transfer station itself so that people can pick them up really quickly there. 
uh, as for grants, um, I think we've already applied for free PP technical assistance in Olympic Smart. Yes. Yes, that, that application went in a, a month ago or so with the selectman's approval. Yeah, so it's basically just someone from the DEP uh, aiding, aiding the town in implementing SMART. Uh, then we also recommend the town apply for a DEP implementation funding grant, which is about $10 per household, and as we mentioned, requires those private hall regulations that we mentioned earlier. So these are just some next steps and timelines timelines that we kind of sketched out roughly. Okay, so next week the Joe Second Committee is going to have a vote of support and not support of the SMART program. And then for the rest of September, the SMART program will be briefed to selectmen and town administrators. And if they're supportive, a Joe SMART Planning Committee will be created. And then through October and November, the Planning Committee will update the strongman proposal and develop a more detailed operating plan and budget with the um, 40 hours of impact assistance that Tanya was talking about. And then for the rest of 2015, the planning committee would submit the plan to a warrant committee. And then January through March, the planning committee can hold public hearings and public information sessions to the end present to the town if townspeople have a lot of questions about the program. And then in April, the a SMART program implementation team can be established, and they can apply for the Mass DEP implementation grant of $10 per household. And then through, from April through June, a more detailed implementation plan can be written, and July through September, the program plan can be established. Kathy, do you happen to know on the towns that are run by town meeting, the Board of Selectmen, whether the transition to a pay-as-you-go program went through a town meeting approval or was just um, designated by the Selectmen? Um, in more cases than not, I believe it is a decision of the Board of Selectmen, but in some cases it does go through town meeting. Sorry, I was going to say, Carol, what do you think of that timeline? Does that, that look uh, reasonable from your experience? <laughs> I'm going to do this on camera. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, I think the timeline is, well, I just think the timeline is incredibly ambitious okay. and really not doable. Um, and um, I think if you, if you want to get to yes on this, yeah. that you need to take the time to do it right and that you will not have time. There's too much going on in a small staff in this town to do this properly. So I think the goal should be to implement it. If the town, if the selectmen choose not to go to town meeting, and I have no idea what they would do with that, but if they don't go to town meeting, they can implement it any time they want. It doesn't have to be at the, at the beginning of a fiscal year on July 1st. So give yourself time, whether it's 12 or 18 months, whatever it takes, to get it done right. You know, and also, as we've discussed at the recycling committee meetings, there's a lot of other low-hanging fruit that impacts our numbers that we haven't addressed, right. like mattresses and hard plastics, and the fact that the book bin is, it gets full and doesn't get emptied, so the books go into the uh, into the trash. I mean, there's so many little things that could be done to see. So I, I think you need to look at it as a whole picture, and I think that takes a little bit of time too. So. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any any slides? Uh, so I guess the next slide is just uh, you know it's all, all the source. So this is in your package. All the sources. These are the the case studies that I mentioned on Duxbury, Needham, Sandwich, and then the presentation we had from Littleton and North Brookfield. So so the Littleton um, you said you had a page to throw committee that was established. Did they have um, um, and, and it kind of addressed what the concerns were for the public. So is that available somewhere that we could kind of like breeze through it and, you know? The concerns for the public? Yeah, how they, they established a committee yeah. and then the, um, the public had a voice and they brought their, their concerns to that committee and then the committee kind of weeded through them to establish their yeah. program in the town. I, I don't know if they have that like documented anywhere or yeah. it's not like publicly published, but I'm sure, I found Littleton very responsive when I tried to get in okay. contact with them. So if you try to get in contact with them, 
I'm sure they did. They can get you something. Okay. Yeah. This has been a fantastic presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So you all uh, have uh, hard copies and you should all stew on it. Um, I, I contend the most compelling slide in the whole presentation is that one with all the bar charts. I, I can't read the numbers, but uh, uh, it shows the, uh, maybe one of you guys can read the numbers on the third page from the top, the top left corner. Or something. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. The red and the green bar charts. Yeah, that, that's, that really just makes the point that the red bars are the towns without the smart and the green are the towns with smart and the difference in the averages, that just kind of says the whole thing. Um, but have a, have a think about it. We, we were meeting next Wednesday night? Yes. Right. Wednesday night? Wednesday night. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Based on what other towns have done, mm -hmm. there wasn't really any like formal calculations put into it, which would, would have to be put into it going forward. Right. Yeah. I think that was going to be part of my question um, because how I just can't get my head around we you know, spent about $400,000 on the uh, program on our waste disposal, and then when you're talking about car fees. Uh, annual fees and fees for the bags. Did you do a calculation or hypothetical yourselves, taking the Dover, the actual budget, and figuring so many households, so many cars, so many, in other words, where did you, how did you arrive at those numbers? Yeah, like I said, they were kind of just estimates based on other towns. We didn't really get a chance to do all those calculations and carry it out, but that's obviously something that if we're a committee to be established, that's something we would have to go through and look at carefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, just the, um, I apologize for being late, but the towns that I did see, I noticed that on a per household basis, given the towns for the most part were bigger than Dover, uh, we're talking about programs that were less than double our cost for a town that was, mm -hmm. I think it was one, there was a summer site. Like 28,000 uh, people in the town and budget was 700,000. So obviously that's not over. Um, yeah, so I think also about those other towns, a lot of these towns, when they implemented the program, they did just have a flat annual fee and then they kind of combined that with variable costs, whereas Dover also has our taxes going to paying for that, which is not a consideration of the town. So I think that's, that might be something that might be a little different in Dover. And as Vicki said, we might work towards phasing out those taxes and maybe that might result in increasing the annual fee of the stick which people are buying at the transportation. So that's the range there, Matthew. The bags were between 25 cents and $2. This is across the whole state. I see. And okay. 25 to $100. It doesn't say per household or per car. It just says per year yeah. for the fixed fee. And uh, just another consideration is, is you don't necessarily have to use the fees to cover all the costs. You could still choose to fund half the transfer station costs with taxes mm -hmm. and half by fees. I think the idea is really is to just make it a unit-based system so that, you know, there's, there's just a natural human instinct. If it's a, a dollar a bag, uh, for trash and a, a free for a bag of recycling, you know, people are just going to recycle more. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's the incentive, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the weight you can put into those typical bags, like a 15 versus 30 or 18? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> That's on the mill, right? A 30 gallon bag is typically going to get between 20 and 25 pounds. Okay. Um, in the smaller bag, the 15 gallon bag, about 12 to 15 pounds approximately. If you picture the 15 yeah. gallon bag, it's very similar to say a 12 kitchen bag. Yeah. Slightly bigger than So you have about 40 pounds a week if you got one of each. 
the D value on each. Yeah. Which is the average. That's mm -hmm. very much the average in, in a smart patient drug community would be one and a half bags looking at the large bag. Yeah. So it's very much the one large plus one small. But it's going to vary by household and, mm -hmm. and by community. But that is the average. You mean that's if you recycle? Presuming you recycle. Certainly there'll be those that choose not to, but when they have to pay to put their trash yeah. out, but recycling is free there's the incentive to recycle more. And you accept so many items for recycling, it's a natural to do, redirect that material to recycling. Right. Or, you know, to have the food scraps picked up at home. It's a wonderful service that's provided. It's available in Dover. Right. It isn't available in a lot. Well, I'm doing all of that and with the food scraps and the rest of it. It's about four, it's probably about 35, 40 pounds a week. And that's they for the household of five. They still have left. Well, that's, yeah, that's the my trash. refuse, yeah. You're in about 260 a year, 260 tons a year. What's that? Huh? What's that? The average collection. So, you know, right now, yeah. is about 260 tons a year. I did my, I ran those numbers too. But. Kathy, would, would recycling, it also comes with costs. Yes. You know, you recycle more, you maybe need more containers, more trips. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's got to be looked at as well. I agree. I think that if the committee decides to go forward and presuming that you would get the grant for technical assistance, which would be a chunk of my time to work with the group, whatever group mm -hmm. comes together, mm -hmm. um, that's, I think, a real, very key part of the analysis to get the current budget, your current costs for recyclables and for trash, and to look at the very, you know, to the best of our ability, the real estimated impacts of what that would be for the community, because it will vary based on your tipping fee, based on your hauling mm -hmm. costs, your recycling costs, as you mentioned. The recycling costs will likely go up a certain, to a certain extent, just through hauling, because and you have more material. Do you recall, do you use the garbage collection, the pygmy and we call, as part of our recycling numbers percentage? Like what we did for this uh, presentation? No. No, no, not for no, this no, no, but, but, but overall, overall, recycling percentage, no. Yeah. Uh, no. We have that, that's about 8% more, you know. Which is very substantial. In fact, right. um, well, DEP doesn't calculate general recycling rates across the okay. state like we used to. So that's not it. Because of, oh. Mostly because of the organics and yard waste. Sure. Right? It's very difficult to get a realistic number on that. So the cleaner number we tend toward is the um, the common recyclables, which is going to be your paper, cardboard bottles, and cans. But that could be a good part of why we're low, too, you know? Um, well, but, 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 if you, but, but to Kathy's point, it, no, it, I, it, right. you're at least the number itself may not be correct, but comparatively, you're comparing apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. That's no, why no, I think you have to look but, away from, sort of turn our attention away from recycling rates and look more at the pounds of trash and oh, sure. yeah. because then that That's really is forward. what's left of what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. regardless of how much recycling you do. Right. That was something that was just the theoretically right. 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 concerned mm -hmm. a little bit apples with oranges because we pay and measure everything by weight, and yet a pay as you throw program is by volume. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, there's not a one to one correlation. I think this is simpler, understandably, and less expensive. Anecdotally, though, um, could Wade or the guys that work at the transfer station say, if you say 86% of the town's going there, what percentage of that mm -hmm. town is just going and dumping their trash that's just stopping doing the recycle? I mean, just anecdotally, it seems like everyone that I, I very rarely ever see people just go in there and go right to the um, trash. the trash without stopping and doing the recycling yes. first. I mean, you see what? Some people doing that. Yeah. yeah. So what percentage yeah. though? At one in four? Yeah. You know, one in five? Yeah, it's usually somebody who has a pickup truck or yeah. a larger. And maybe they already took the recycling yeah. before <laughs> and they were just coming. I also think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of waste that's put in that doesn't need to be put in that's like compost or food scraps. Like I think a lot of people don't make the effort to you know, purchase like compost bins or right. just contact the town for this food scraps program. Right. And, yeah. So and then there are the um, commercial haulers that we don't see, that well, obviously don't stop. Well, the other thing with the commercial hauler is he's, he's taking his recycles on a single stream and taking it somewhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, um, but he's still dumping with whatever yeah. weight is or whatever that amount is, the truck. 
trash in, you know. We're getting that trash, but not the recyclables. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get solid. Yeah. Yeah. You're solid getting that waste. Solid waste for us. Right. That's 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 the, the, the apples to apples. Uh, now it may be driven by median income. There may be. It's it's the, the another factor is the problem with it by a household is some towns have more people per household. They're not all the same. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not. It's it, the best way to normalize it is per person. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess for whatever reason, as the EP is chosen to do it by household. It's but, not even just the EP. It's nationally. I think that's the more common nationally. factor. Often because curbside programs drive a lot of this. The end, well, when I think of transfer stations as well, it's easier to get a pulse on what your that first sticker, which represents your household, brings in. And in a curbside program, if you're paying like by household, that's a number that's actually cleaner to capture than a per capita. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose you in that, but it actually becomes a reform. Well, of course, yeah. how many times do you slice and dice it? Because the household that's got two folks that are 80 is going to be very different than a household that has, uh, uh, you know, three folks that are two teenagers and a parent. I mean, it, it's just all on to the demographics of it, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, you just have to come up with something. Right, right. But the household income does have made a difference for sure. I, I can say reasonably that with all the analysis I've looked at for a couple of decades now, <laughs> I'll say, um, Higher income, higher, more disposable income, you're going to have more throwaways, most likely. You also have more, tend to have more, a more educated community, so you'll see a lot of recyclables in those communities as well. You'll see them doing a really good job on recycling, but just a lot of generation in general. So um, people are often surprised. They'll look at the cities and say, how can they actually perform a little bit better than us? Well, you know, you have less space often. Okay, so you can just look at the demographics and the space that people have. There's less room to amass certain Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, there are certain um, of, the, of these communities or others that are exemplary in the spirit in which they approach this that, that we could perhaps try to emulate. Great question. I'm sitting here thinking that if we decide to go forward with this, um, I, I will say that I worked with the town of Wellfleet a couple of years ago and they were thinking about this very much probably in the same place that you are. And we talked a lot when we met and I said, you know what, let's go see some transfer stations. Mm -hmm. And we said, on one day we set up a tour of two transfer stations. We went to Sandwich and to Duxbury, brought the officials with us, didn't just one hour at each one, take a half day, but seeing it, the decision makers to see it for themselves and talk to their colleagues in those communities, I think makes uh, makes a big difference. It answers questions. It gets to the things that are pretty and less pretty about it. But what's the reality of it? Um, I think Sandwich has done a terrific job. Um, I've actually had their public works director come and speak at regional meetings a couple of times. I don't know if you know Paul Tilton, but he's he's terrific. Um, so I would say Sandwich um, is a star. Duxbury, they've had some turnover with staffing, so they also being you know, relatively close. Um, Needham is so much bigger than you, mm -hmm. and Needham takes in commercial materials, so while it's a very nice transfer station, I don't know if it's a reasonable comparison. I look around. I mean, Norfolk is pretty good too, but they don't use bags. But they have a nice transfer station. <laughs> I'll look at my map and see this. <laughs> Two questions, okay. So is there is there DEP money available to promote the pig program for the food waste reduction? To try to get that more established and going because just food explicitly? Yeah. So not the smart program if you go forward. No, well I'm just no, no I'm saying I'm just asking a personal question. There was a is there money available through DEP to promote the existing pig program that we have here oh, the for food waste? Program, just for the yeah, like for flyers and do make people more aware of that. Uh, yeah, that grant, you know, they, they're in the process of kind of um, assessing those awards right now. Yeah, because that's um, about 25 pounds per week for a family of five. Gee, I don't remember if Dover applied for that. That's a single materials recovery program grant. We didn't even we were able to get, there's a five or seven. There's so one that, piece of it, you want to so yes. It was specifically for organics. Is, is there a, uh, so that's a yes? Not at the moment. Oh. The cycle will then open again. That grant closed in June. Right. And so the package, we're in the process of like yeah. putting together the awards now. 
Yep. So it'll open again next year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's an, an, it's an annual call. grant. Wait, it's an annual grant. We just well, have to know when, yeah. when so this year. There is a grant. There is a grant, but it just, you weren't able to get everything in this year. You need to try again next year. Okay. And what's so the grant called? Yeah. Sustainable one? Sustainable Materials Recovery Program. It's under all of those okay. 10 or 9 different. <laughs> okay. Now, one, of the, one of the things about the, the food, or, uh, food disposal program, program is. Um, so I don't know if there are other places the food can be taken, but uh, when I interacted with the pig farmer last uh, fall for, in connection with Dover Day, I had the distinct impression he likes to keep a very low profile. Yeah. Uh, more than it, actually we talked about it, he likes to keep a low profile. Um, and I have a suspicion he's, he's getting all the food that he needs and can handle. That, that I don't know that. I, I didn't kind of bottom up the conversation, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an insatiable yeah. destination. No, he's getting okay. more pigs. Uh, in, in theory, but he's he's in kind of on the corner in downtown Halston yeah. or whatever, and he's already getting a lot of flack. So I, I just don't know that that's a, a, yeah, a viable. bottomless pit yeah. for the food right. to go. And I, I don't know if there's other places you can take food if the town is enthusiastic about it. There are some other outlets. I was just okay. trying to get a few minutes ago. I was doing a workshop on it actually in a couple of weeks. Oh. Okay. Um, again, it's collection. I was hoping someone from Dover might actually want to talk about your program, um, but like maybe from the Board of Health. Um, mm -hmm. But it sounds like that may or may not be something you would want to promote. Or maybe the pig farmer doesn't want to Yeah, you know, if, if, if we wanted to promote it, I think we would have to explore mm -hmm. his capacity and mm -hmm. possibly some other destinations. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. own uh, impression is that we're kind of close to his capacity. There's a farm in Medway. I'm not sure where yours goes now. So All the yeah. So there's a farm in Medway, so that would probably be one of the closer ones. This one in the well, this is in Medway. I mean, I thought it was in Medway. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, it's Jimmy Brothers. Yeah, forever. Now, I, I, so I may have made a mistake on him, but I uh, really had the impression he was kind of topped out. I'm not sure. I think he's taking from some schools in the area. I have contact. He's come to a few of my uh, workshops on this to get a feel. Um, I don't know what he's going to do. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, we we'll call it a day, I guess, huh? Thanks, yeah. thanks very much for coming Thank down. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Yeah,